This is Christy with Carter & Company in San Luis Obispo, California. I am with Jeff Armstrong, president of Cal Poly State University, and he is going to tell us some information about the school, the students, your vision for the direction that Cal Poly is going over the next several years, and enlighten me. <laughs> well, thanks, Christy. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Yeah, uh, Cal Poly is, uh, is going really well. Uh, one of our major um, underlying and guiding principles is learn by doing. And one aspect of learn by doing for all our students, faculty, and staff is constantly getting better. So that's one thing that, that guides us every day, learn by doing. So the new year is off to a really fantastic start. Uh, we had uh, almost 67,000 applications for fall of 18, and we're welcoming 5,300 new students to campus. The majority are first-time freshmen uh, and about 950 transfer students. And they come from all over California, the majority, about 85% or more, and the rest come from all over the U.S. and around the world. Uh, we just had move-in this weekend, so we had, we had parents from all over, all over California, uh, Colombia, China, India, South Africa, and so it's very exciting. It's incredible. I know. I noticed the town was a lot busier. Uh, the restaurants <laughs> were full and they loved that. <laughs> yeah. So nice. So talk to me about new housing. The school just... Yes, we, we um, opened the f for the first time since 1973, we opened new housing for freshmen. Uh, we opened 1,475 beds which really won't provide any more beds on campus for freshmen because we were housing all our freshmen on campus, but we were using apartments built for sophomores. So we're going to have an additional 800 students from the neighborhoods now moving to campus. But back to those 1,475 beds for freshmen, we're very excited because we worked very, very long and thoughtfully uh, with the Chumash tribe, and the, the uh, new housing is named Yaki Tutu which means community. And each of the buildings, like Napumu or Telhini, all of the buildings have names, they have meanings of places that are very important to the Chumash. So not only do we have new housing, but we have an opportunity for students to learn respect, to learn the language, and to remember those who came before us. Mm -hmm. So we're very exciting. That's gonna put us at over 8,000 students living on campus. So all of our freshmen, unless they have an exemption, mm -hmm. and then uh, probably about 50 to 55% of our sophomores, and then we're gonna start planning another 2,600 beds. We're actually in the planning phases, and as soon as possible, uh, we will have another 2,600 beds, which will push, it up, push us on up toward uh, 11,000, and our final goal is to have 15,000 beds on campus. Now, if you couple that with the fact that we're not really going to grow our enrollment over the next few years, we'll be pulling more and more students out of the neighborhoods on campus. That's good for several reasons. First of all, if students live on campus for two years, mm -hmm. their retention at the junior year and their subsequent graduation rate is increased by as much as 10%. For low-income students in certain majors, it's as much as 15%. And then we're pulling students out of the neighborhoods and we hope we can increase the housing inventory for the working uh, families, our faculty and staff and everyone else in the neighborhood because housing is such a problem. So we can actually do several good things in one full, you know, one move by adding more housing. Hmm. Okay, that is a concern for residents that, you know, are just, there's Cal Poly students and parties right next door to their, you know, beautiful house on Choro Street, for instance. So I think that will make a lot of people glad to hear. Yeah, and our students, um, the, the, the overarching behaviors and everything with the students has consistently, we believe, gotten better over the years. If you look at um, some indicators of that, they've, they've dropped dramatically. Uh, but we do have our students, they're here, they're part of town. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the businesses, the restaurants, they, they all appreciate and enjoy that business. So we're working really hard to you know, maintain our enrollment. Uh, uh, in the next few years, we'll, we'll drop it to about 21,300. And we won't increase our enrollment uh, until we have additional offices, laboratories, 
uh, lecture halls, as well as able to hire additional faculty and staff. So we won't be growing our enrollment until 2021, 2022 at the earliest. Okay, and, and talk so, to me about this new initiative. Yeah, so a, 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 a new initiative and something we're really proud of that we've been working on for several years uh, is, is really related to lowering bar barriers. Hmm. Cal Poly is a very uh, special place uh, we would love to be bigger and accept more students, but the facts are we have limited enrollment, and so it's very high demand uh, to get into different majors. So Cal Poly students are admitted right into a, a major. You know, they do senior projects. There's lots of other unique things. But we've found over the years uh, that lower income California students, we don't have the, the financial aid necessary for our campus fees because if you look at cost of attendance, it's campus fees, system-wide tuition, uh, room and board, books, transportation, clothing. All that this fall for an annual, for the annual year adds up to about $28,000. For one student? Our, for one student, our tuition and fees, but that's everything. Mm -hmm. Our tuition and fees uh, are less than $10,000. So if you look at just the sticker price, we're a lower uh, sticker price mm -hmm. than all of the University of California. But if you look at the cost of Cal Poly after you account for financial aid that's available to California students, we're the most expensive public university in California. The average is 18,000 after accounting for financial aid, mm -hmm. and that's more than the UC average and more than the CSU average. So that's a barrier. So what we're gonna do is take advantage of another set of numbers. Uh, out of state students, out of country students come to Cal Poly, mm -hmm. And it's a tremendous bargain. Uh, in some cases, it's lower cost per year, even though there's some added fees. It's a lower cost for year, per year than their state, say the state of Illinois, in-state subsidized, is more expensive than Cal Poly paying out of state. We also look at the number, uh, and we compare it to the University of California average. We're about $22,000 under market on an annual basis for out-of-state students. So our new proposal, and was approved as a pilot project by the CSU, is that we're going to charge the out-of-state students an on-campus fee, charge them more, only new incoming undergraduate students, not current students, and then we're going to use the bulk of that money to provide financial aid for low-income California students. Mm -hmm. So the out-of-state students, while I hate to see a few of them are low-income, low I hate to see them may have to make other choices, but they have other choices. They have, ta you know, they're paying taxes in their home state or they're international. So there's no simple good answer, but the priority is to our low-income California students. And this is really exciting because it's, it's going to be a breakthrough. So that because there are students that decide not to come to Cal Poly, and the main reason, and we know this from our research, is because of the finances and the lack of financial aid. So our strength became our weakness. Our strength is our college-based, our campus-based fees, which fuels learn by doing. Mm -hmm. But yet, some of those that needed access to Cal Poly, it then became a barrier because we didn't have financial aid for those campus-based fees. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, it's we're taking advantage of a real market value for others, and they'll continue to come and providing that for the low-income students. Now, the interesting thing, uh, about this is the scholarships are based on need mm -hmm. and that's Prop 209 compliant okay. but the majority of low-income students are minority because they reflect the population of California mm -hmm. it's so in that sense Cal Poly will see more diversity in the students but it's a reflection of removing the barrier for low-income students that's not the only uh, reason and that's not the only relationship to diversity not at all there are many other aspects, but it's a real breakthrough for Cal Poly to be able to remove this barrier due to financial aid. So the learn by doing system, okay, well, and then back to the financial aid. I mean, I, I am from Santa Cruz area, and I received financial aid. I went to Cal Poly, and it was pretty wonderful, but I know I'm part of the exception that gets to do that, so this will be neat. Um, what would you tell um, parents of high school seniors throughout the country who are considering, you know, sending their kids to different colleges? Mm -hmm. You went here. 
What no, do you I, I actually, I, I love Cal Poly, and I, I actually uh, was a first generation student in that my parents didn't go to college, but I attended a small school in uh, Murray State. It's small, but very proud, okay. uh, Murray State. And um, I, I had limited financial aid because we owned land, mm -hmm. and at the time that counted against you. And so I graduated from not only undergraduate, but graduate school with debt. And so I know, I know what that's like. I don't know all the things that some of the students go through, but I understand that aspect. So what I would say to, first of all, to our California students who is the majority, we, we have frozen uh, our uh, out-of-state population uh, to be no more than 15%. Mm -hmm. So we're always gonna serve the super majority California, 85%. So first I would say to our California students is come and visit. Uh, participate in some of our high school programs in engineering and architecture, uh, get to know Cal Poly, look at a major that lines up with you because you apply to your major, and don't, don't think you're not Cal Poly eligible. Try. Uh, please uh, you know, apply to Cal Poly. And also, we'll be offering, f starting fall of 19, additional financial aid. Mm -hmm. And those financial aid packages are available March 1. So I'd say to the students that, that uh, uh, are eligible for financial aid, fill out that federal form, mm -hmm. uh, the, the FAFSA form. And then to the out-of-state and international uh, students, I'd say, we still want you. It's still a very, very good value. And if you look at the rankings, our architecture program is the top public uh, architecture program in the United States. For master's uh, universities, I think uh, more than half of our engineering degrees are in the top three of all engineering programs, undergraduate programs in the United States. And all the rest of our colleges, uh, liberal arts, science and math, uh, business, uh, agriculture, food and environmental sciences, all of the colleges are, are doing extremely well and, and they're, very high, they're very highly ranked as well. So it's a, it's a great program driven by learn by doing. I remember the learn by doing. I wish I had the science building now. <laughs> I had the old science building. And then when, when you went to school, and I would never ask you when, <laughs> uh, the state provided much more of the investment mm -hmm. of when you went to school. So uh, I even had one of our graduates who, who I, I believe attended in the late 40s. He told me, he said, I think I even made money one year because of all the, sub, you know, because of the support from the state. And so one of the problems that we've had in higher education around the country is with recession and with problems, the states have, have disinvested in higher education. Mm -hmm. So what used to be 90% covered by the state mm -hmm. back in the day for the UC and, Cal and the CSU, the California State University System, we're now at about 50-50. Oh. The state, uh, and, and for Cal Poly, because of our additional campus fees, the students and the parents, supporters, they're the majority investor in their own education now at 55%. How would you, because when I came in, I, you know, you have to declare a major. And so when the student declares a major and gets accepted into Cal Poly, is there um, counseling if they want to change their major or? Yeah, and a few years ago, it was more, it was difficult to change a major, but it's not now. You know, students can come in and talk with their advisors. Okay. And for our, the students that will be providing additional financial aid, they're gonna get even more aggressive and intrusive advising. They're required to live on campus for two years. So the, uh, our Cal Poly Scholars is the program, that's what we call it. Mm -hmm. The Cal Poly Scholars, as well as all, all, our, all our students get that counseling and advising. And there's some rules and regulations because we don't want people, you know, gaming the system. Right. That, you know, engineering, for example, is much, much higher demand than some other, some other majors. So we want to make sure that if someone is wanting to transfer to engineering, number one, they can handle it. Mm -hmm. And number two, did they really have the scores coming in? Are they coming in, uh, you know, in a way that wasn't planned? But students can change their major. I, I've known students that have changed their major, graduated in three years or four years. So we take these Cal Poly students through the three, you know, three to five years at the, at the longest, max, um, in terms of them graduating. I know that there's career fairs that Cal Poly hosts. How do we keep some of the stu graduating students in our local community? And how does Cal Poly kind of enhance um, you know, the 
lack of job growth in San Luis Obispo? These yeah, well, that's a really interesting question. So let me start with some of the basics and then come back to, to it. If you look at Cal Poly, I, I tell our parents and students uh, during uh, you know orientation, especially just the other night uh, during uh, week of welcome, that uh, the cool thing about Cal Poly is your students eventually won't move back in with you because they get jobs. Mm -hmm. We survey our students and 93, depending on the year, 93 to 94 percent of our students six months out are gainfully employed uh, in a graduate or professional program or doing what they, cho they have chosen to be doing. Mm -hmm. And some it might be taking a gap year or Peace Corps, but they are very, very, uh, they've landed very well. We also know from uh, uh, the surveys, and in fact, uh, just recently there was an article uh, published in the Tribune mm -hmm. that uh, demonstrated the value of a Cal Poly degree. Uh, a group uh, surveyed and looked at salaries of graduates, and only one public university in California had higher sal average salaries than Cal Poly, just one. And, and we ranked in the top ten of all universities in California. And in those California universities are in the top. Uh, other surveys that have been done you know, we're in, the, we're in the top 20, 25 public universities in the country uh, on, on, on salaries. So we do want to grow jobs. We're especially sensitive to growing jobs and thinking about sustainability, mm -hmm. good head of household jobs, and we also want to think about diversity as we can look, look at bringing diversity to our community. So we're looking at this in many ways. We have a Center for Innovation and, uh, and Entrepreneurship uh, it's on campus. Students start in any college, but it's, folk, it's headquartered and some focus in the college, Orfila College of Business. Mm -hmm. And the, the students start out with an elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. It may or may not be a company that's real, but we've had students win the national championship in elevator pitch, you know, a two minute, uh, two minute elevator pitch, and go on to form companies. And so this whole CIE uh, is involved with helping them form teams and you may get an engineer with an idea and business or ag and business and then they they move to the hothouse and there's a couple of different programs in the hothouse downtown where they first go into a shorter period program and then they go into the into the program that's uh, much longer and we've had several companies we've had investors we have uh, many alumni and people that are helping them then we also have apartments downtown where about 35 students live, uh, upper class, junior, senior, and master students, and first preference is for those students in the hothouse. So we want to plan that. We're especially sensitive to that because in 24, 25, when Diablo Canyon uh, is decommissioned, then we need to replace, you know, 1,500, 1,400 very good head of household jobs. So we're very excited about that. We're also going to expand our tech park on campus. We have a demand now for multiple companies that want space in our tech park and we're trying to get that planned and built as soon as possible. So it's a it's a really interesting time and I believe we can have significant economic growth in San Luis Obispo and still maintain the character of what we want in our community. I really applaud uh, you know the, uh, the the work that's been done to expand our airport and new airport and added flights there's so many positive things going. Mm -hmm. uh, Amazon expanding downtown, downtown. Mind Body has expanded over the years. There's just many examples, and I think we will see more of that, and we want to be a part of that. And the hot house is pretty amazing. Doesn't the mayor have a, or she used to have a <laughs> office in the, hot, or a desk in the Yeah, hot she's house. there quite often, <laughs> and, and the city supports, the county supports, and many donors support the hot house. So I appreciate you mentioning that because we have great partnership with the city and the county, uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of uh, organized economic development effort that's going on with that partnership. And it's not just San Luis Obispo city and county, it's from Paso Robles uh, to Santa Maria. Mm -hmm. So we meet on a quarterly basis and talk about economic development, and we are really focused on uh, increasing those jobs that we're going to, and, and more than. We're going to do more than those 1,400 mm -hmm. by the time the dust settles. I believe it. How do you feel about the technology in the classroom and 
um, you know, the online s classes and things of that nature, could you increase enrollment with online programs? Um, I, th I no. think there's a, I've always been engaged and Cal Poly is engaged in technology. Uh, we are really focused though on a residential experience. Our vision 2022 sees us having a more residential and a more diverse campus. But for us, uh, online, there's a, a, a significant number of our students that take online courses either from Cal Poly or Cuesta or from other universities. We want to enhance students' study abroad. We want to see more of Cal Poly out in the world, more of the world come here. Mm -hmm. So they can take online courses and digital courses when they're away, when they're doing an internship, say six months for Apple, mm -hmm. whatever that may be, and then stay on track. And then we have uh, professors that are flipping the classroom. So what they'll do is they'll provide the information online in a variety of formats. It may be the traditional lecture or get the information. And then you come into the class and you're engaged mm -hmm. and you're learn by doing. Mm -hmm. And that works in the classroom for liberal arts where learn by doing is alive and well. And it just provides uh, additional time. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a Star Trek fan. So I've always thought about, well, you see Star Trek and there's the future. Mm -hmm. And thousands of years in the future, they're still going to Starfleet Academy in San Francisco to learn how to learn in person. So think, think back to what we were saying earlier. A student lives on campus two years versus one year, and especially if they're low income, their retention and success is elevated. Mm -hmm. So we need to provide that nurturing environment that provides the social inter interactions, the learn by doing outside the classroom, and we need to embrace technology. So it's an and both. Another thing that I would offer about Cal Poly is uh, we think of learn by doing and we think of the classrooms, uh, we think of laboratories, uh, and again, it's alive and well. We certainly think about it in engineering or STEM, mm -hmm. but it's alive in business, it's alive in liberal arts. But it's also a, a, a alive in our co-curricular and extracurricular activities. We have Cal Poly students that are involved in competitions that are academic in nature, mm -hmm. uh, the Steel Bridge Contest, uh, we have students that win agribusiness marketing contests, I mean national champions five out of six years in a row. Uh, I think I mentioned our architecture program was named number three, the top public, and they were first in a multiple categories. And then we also have our student athletes and we have our students that perform in the band, the symphony, orchestras, uh, theater, dance, mm -hmm. 300 clubs on campus. If you don't, if you see something that you'd like to do that's uh, an activity like that, mm -hmm. you can start a club. So it's just a really rich environment here for Learn By Doing. And one of our goals is just to make sure that we're working on climate, mm -hmm. we're working on diversity with the context of all the laws that we live under and follow, you know, diligently, uh, so that everybody feels welcome. Whether they're selected to join us as a faculty member or staff, or whether they're selected uh, to join us as a student, they all, in their point of view, have to choose Cal Poly. Mm -hmm. And we want them to do that because it's important. We want everybody to feel welcome, uh, and we want that for our broader community too. That's why we're having discussions and working with the city and the county yeah. with regard to our climate and everything else. But I want to be clear, you know, there's so many rules and regulations. We stay true to those. Mm -hmm. And, and we follow those, those rules. And our Cal Poly Scholars is a good example where we're lowering barriers for low-income California students. Mm -hmm. And I don't think anyone would argue that why should finances be a barrier uh, to the future of, uh, of our state? And Cal Poly provides so many leaders and wonderful um, leaders in the workforce uh, we're, we're very excited about this move and we're going to be able to match donors uh, and really move forward in development because fundraising is important. We can't rely on the state to maintain, let alone grow our excellence. So all of our alumni and friends, we need their support and we want them to know that every dollar that they give is going to be used wisely and in the way that they want to see it used. Does the money that, you know, if people are going to events at the PAC, does that go towards Cal Poly? So the Performing Arts Center is, is, a, is a collaboration 
uh, of the city and the Foundation for the Performing Arts and Cal Poly. Okay. So we all partner to fund the PAC. So anything that's generated by the PAC stays there for the Performing Arts Center, helps get our youth in the community to attend the Performing Arts mm -hmm. Center and to maintain this beautiful 20-something year structure like it's new. So uh, it is a really good example of a partnership mm -hmm. and it's also an example of where donors that uh, support the Performing Arts, uh, they can do that in a way through the foundation that is not associated with Cal Poly, or they can be associated with Cal Poly. Mm -hmm. So it really works well. What's your best, why do you do this job? <laughs> what, what do you find fulfilling about this? Well, I've been in education all my career, and I, I really love seeing people succeed. And I also know what education meant to myself and my family. And I just wanna see others have that opportunity and being a low-income student myself, I have a special place in my heart for our low-income California students, mm -hmm. and that's true for all low-income students, but because of where we are and who we are, you know, my first priority goes to our California students. But I, I will work with donors and provide scholarships for international, uh, national low-income students uh, but when it comes to our resources, we're, we're focusing and we want to we want to impact as many of those students as we can Because number one, it's the right thing to do mm -hmm. and number two It's going to be good for our community good for our university and good for our state right. okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank, thank you, you.